I've got to be quiet because it's stupid o'clock in the morning. This is the original mounting for the seat post. Now there's two of these, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, the bolts go through the mounting post, through the frame and then into this and it pulls against it to clamp the post. That's literally it. It used to have M4 bolts or M3 bolts in it. I made them into M4 bolts but it's still, when I, when I tighten them to the torque that I want, it's still pulling them out. That's all that literally holds you and the seat together. <laughs> <laughs> so I've made these steel ones. Uh, this used to be 12 by 12, but it's now 11 by 12 or 12 by 11, as you can see. I've had to cut one millimetre off that side. That took me three days to do that, believe it or not, because steel is not very easy to file, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway. So I've got these, they are obviously go in an angle, the same as these. So I'm going to fit this, I've done the other one, the other one's already in. I'm going to fit this and hopefully I'll be able to torque the seat down to the bloody pressure that I actually want it, rather than <laughs> hoping. <laughs> Although it doesn't look like it, that is actually a 10% infill swinging arm, which is suspending the wheel. I think that's off the ground, just about, is it? Yeah. So I'm damn sure a carbon fibre version is going to work. I haven't put the brake caliper on, as you can see, but, you know, it's just to make sure that everything lines up and everything works, and it works perfectly. So what I've got to do now is redesign it, because I want to put... It's hard to get down here, but, you know, I want to put a torque arm on here, incorporate it into the swinging arm so I may actually do a cutout that goes along here and make my own uh, torque arm for it I don't know whether to put it on the outside or the inside I'm not decided yet uh, if I have the torque arm going to you know something like that I don't know this is going to be the positive pattern so I'm going to make the negative pattern of it so as I can do it um, forged. This is the cross brace that goes between the two swinging arms. As in these, it bolts into those holes. Yeah. It bolts into those holes there like that. I've been looking at ways to make this out of carbon fibre because this is heavy. 530 grams. Now I reckon I can make it at least well, less than half that weight. I'm going to make it out of a solid piece and it's going to be forged. It's going to be a combination of forged and using woven stuff uh, so as I can get the outside sort of quality, the look of it but I also need the structural strength because it's got to stop torsional um, torsional forces. So I've got to design a mould for it. I'm going to design it. I'm going to see if it's possible. I know it's going to be strong enough. It'll definitely be strong enough. But I don't know how much weight I'm going to save. Obviously you've got the weight of the bolts which isn't going to change. So we'll see how it goes. I want to make as much out of this with carbon fibre as possible purely because I've got all the kit to do it so I might as well do it but I'm not buying any specialised tools and this that and the other for it because I don't see that I should need to I need to talk about these castings, the moulds that you make now when I make these I, make, I do the base which is just an inverse of the mould and then I make the side pieces Which go that way, Tony. And then I make the piston part, which goes on the top, obviously. Now I make that as a perfect reprodu re reproduction of that. Now, because that is exactly the right size, 
it ain't going to fit. Now you've got one or two choices, you either sand a slither off there or you sand a slither off there, it doesn't matter because that fits into there like that. Now before you think it, like with this thing, why don't I just shrink it by a millimetre that way and a millimetre that way or half a mil or whatever, it doesn't work like that. If I was to shrink this that way, then this would move over to there. So this would shrink, that would move over. So with things like that, and also that bit there, if that, that would move over, um, I'd be alright that way, um, but not that way. With the bottom piece, That would be perfectly fine as well, but the top piece I couldn't have done it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grind this down more than doing the other. I don't want to do the, the, the piston itself, I can do the side rails. So I'm going to bolt them together and then get my drill out. This is the biggest forged carbon fibre bit that I've done. Um, I'm using the infusion resin and I'm also going to be using slow hardener because I need a lot of time to work this in and make sure that everything's perfect. Now I'm using the, the chopped toe sort of stuff that you usually use with, with forged but I'm also going to be using uh, a layer of normal carbon fibre. Now I know this is going to be, or it would have looked a lot better if I'd have used pre-preg or, or resin infusion, but number one, I haven't got the kit. Number two, I can't afford the kit. So, I've got these laid out. This is my cosmetic layer. It's not going to look perfect. <laughs> There's nothing I could do about it. That's a straight up and down. That one goes horizontal. That's diagonal and that's diagonal. So, I suppose that one's going to be my top layer, right at the very back.
cosmetics are now gone out the window. I'm not bothered. Uh, I shouldn't have been bothered in the first place. It's the functionality that I need. I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> well, not anymore. Right, when you've snugged them up, you should have a gap that it won't go any further and you can see the resin starting coming out there, which is a bloody good sign. So over the course of the next 15 minutes, I've got to progressively tighten them up. It's coming out the bottom as well, which is also a good sign. So I'll keep snugging them up until it's completely flush. And then we're good to go. Uh, if you tighten them up too quick, you'll cause um, a hydro lock. The idea of it is you tighten them up gradually so as the excess resin can just ooze out everywhere, like it is doing. Right, they're, they're all snugged up. Now, obviously the next thing I've got to do is clean up. And then what I'm going to do is get this in a vice and I'm going to clamp it in the middle, see down that seam there. That's purely in case this is slightly bowing, is to push the middle bit back in to keep its perfect form. So I've got to clean up and then I can do that. Well I can't put it in the vice for the simple reason my vice isn't big enough. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a bit concerned, I've got a separation. There's a slight separation down there, but all that'll mean is um, the epoxy and everything else will come out of there and it'll be, it'll be sandable down when I've split it anyway. Um, it's all right on the edges where I've bolted it, but obviously you can't, well, I couldn't put a bolt in the middle there. I could do, but I would have had to make the bloody mould a lot thicker. Now, I have learned by my mistakes uh, with, with 3D printing these moulds and stuff. I mean, I could have... You can, you can cut some pieces off or form it into the, you know, where it's not needed rather than making a complete full-size square mould. Now, this bottom piece, this piece here is threaded. And people say that you can't thread into, into plastic. Well, this is PETG, 40% infill, and I've threaded into that perfectly. So, I've got to leave it 12, 24 hours now before I can release it. Yeah. 